Ukrainian inventors have created the FPV drone Kizak Reboff. Its special feature is a fiber optic connection with the operator, which is invulnerable to enemy electronic warfare systems. Forbes reported on the development. Kizak Reboff is an attack drone. Instead of radio communications, which can be suppressed by jammers, it is equipped with a spool of optical fiber, and this is probably the most effective protection of UAVs from electronic warfare systems to date. The Russian occupation forces were the first to use this technology on the battlefield. The Russians are passing off this development as their own, but it turns out that it is a renamed Chinese UAV model, which the Russian army buys from its suppliers with a 750% markup. Nevertheless, the fiber optic drone turned out to be very effective. Ukrainian developers immediately began creating their own version of such a drone. This is how the Reboff Kizak appeared. This is the first model in Ukraine, but certainly not the last. The drone was built by 3D Tech LLV, a company founded by war veteran Alexei Zulinsky. In the summer of 2022, the car he was riding in was blown up by a mine. Unfortunately, two of his fellow soldiers died and he himself was seriously injured and was unable to return to military service. Now, Zulinsky helps the defense forces by creating UAVs. 3D Tech is constantly improving its drones based on military feedback. Every month, new methods and technologies appear and we need to keep up with them. We are actively searching, testing and implementing new technologies since modern warfare is developing very quickly. The head of the company said, one of the biggest problems for the free use of UAVs on the front line is jammers. A large number of them have flooded the line of combat contact, which is why a no-fly zone has been established there. Many enemy targets have become unreachable for the defense forces. And today, the only connection that cannot be affected by enemy electronic warfare is optical fiber. In essence, this is a cable that connects the UAV and its ground station. Today, the company has working versions of UAVs with coils up to 10 kilometers long. Another feature of such a drone is the ability to fly at extremely low altitudes, even at knee length. The enemy often expects the drone to attack from above, so it usually watches the sky. However, fiber optic controlled drones can approach targets while out of sight of the enemy, flying at low altitude, which increases their effectiveness and adds an element of surprise, Zulinski said. A drone on fiber optics is also a very stable connection that does not break, even in buildings. Despite the fact that the UAV flies with a tether, the developers were able to achieve its high maneuverability. It is able to hover in one place, circle above the target, turn around, doing all this at high speeds. This opens up the possibility of using UAVs in urban or underground combat. They can be launched ahead of or even in place of infantry, checking buildings and hitting targets while their operators remain at a safe distance. The article says, With the re-election of Donald Trump, Ukraine's government is now forced to consider pursuing its own nuclear weapons program as an alternative to declining American support, according to a new analysis by Foreign Policy. This represents a reversal of Ukraine's decision to give up its Soviet-era nuclear arsenal in the 1994 Budapest Memorandum in exchange for security assurance from Russia, the US and the UK. The article written by Casey Michel head of the Human Rights Foundation's Combating Kleptocracy program argues that Ukraine's president, 
Volodymyr Zelensky has hinted that Kyiv may seek to develop nuclear weapons if it fails to gain NATO membership. Either Ukraine will have nuclear weapons and that will be our protection, or we should have some sort of alliance, Zelensky said last month. Apart from NATO, today we do not know any effective alliances. Michel notes that this is not the first time Ukraine has considered reviving its nuclear program. In the aftermath of the Soviet collapse in 1991, Ukraine emerged as one of a few nations to claim a portion of the Soviet nuclear arsenal. However, the US and Russia led a joint effort to strip Ukraine of these weapons, which was completed in 1994 through the Budapest Memorandum. The resulting Budapest Memorandum pledged nebulous security assurances for Kiev, with the Kremlin declaring it would never push any threat or use of force against Ukraine, the article states. In return, Kiev gave up its remaining nuclear arsenal, a move that is now not only seen by many Ukrainians as a clear misstep, but that left a lingering distaste in the mouth of Ukrainian officials about America's role in the region and even trustworthiness as a partner. According to the analysis, the re-election of Trump is a significant factor in Ukraine's potential nuclear calculus. With the expectation of diminished US support under a second Trump presidency, Kyiv may see developing its own nuclear deterrent as the only way to guarantee its survival. If NATO keeps closing the door to Ukrainian membership and to the US nuclear umbrella, then a nuclearized Kyiv would be the only logic outcome remaining, the article argues. The piece also notes that Ukraine has the technical capabilities to develop nuclear weapons. Additionally, it suggests that other nations, such as Poland, have previously threatened to pursue their own nuclear weapons programs if not granted NATO membership. The article concludes by stating that the West must welcome Ukraine into NATO, or it must start getting ready for Ukraine to rejoin the same nuclear club it was once a part of all those years ago. A shocking report by Financial Times columnist Gideon Rachman revealed North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's troops were gorging on pornography in their barracks, having never enjoyed such unrestricted access to the web, according to a usually reliable source. Just as the advent of Elon Musk's Starlink satellites transformed the lives of tribes deep in the Amazon rainforest almost overnight, many argue for the worse. The military men from Pyongyang were reportedly hooked immediately, Daily Mail says. It is noted that though full internet access is available for high-level officials and military figures in North Korea, the majority of citizens are only granted access to Kwangmyong or the Bright Star Network. This is the pariah state's only sanctioned web service and is a heavily firewalled and restricted version of the internet which does not permit access to any foreign websites, media or news services and is instead replete with state propaganda. Russia's state-run media and comms regulator Roskomnadzor also maintains an internet traffic regulation system known as TSPU, which was formalized in 2019 and requires Russian internet service providers to ensure government-supplied equipment is installed in their networks. But virtual private networks, tools that allow internet users to encrypt their data and mask their IP addresses to access sites abroad, are not yet banned and are widely used to circumvent the censors. Recall the North Korean troops in Russia have been divided into two units, one made up of assault troops and another of support troops who will organize the defense of territory captured from Ukrainian forces. There has been debate in Ukraine and among its allies about the military significance of the North Korean troops. Some officials have described their recruitment as an act of desperation by Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, whose forces continue to take territory in eastern Ukraine, but at huge losses. Others have said the decision to deploy the troops was meant to weaken Western resolve by showing that Russia remains far from isolated. The North Korean troops could also allow Russia to divert more of its forces to offensive operations on Ukrainian territory, in particular in the Donbass, where Russian troops are attempting to take as much territory as possible before the harsh winter sets in. It is not clear what Putin promised North Korean leader, if anything, in exchange for the troops. For now, American officials say they have seen no evidence of a quid 
pro quo, but there are concerns that Russia might provide some kind of significant military assistance that could enhance the danger North Korea poses to its neighbors and the United States.